Good morning, people of God. It is good for us to be together on this day. Keep that bug spray going around, friends. These black flies are biting at the ankles. So we love we love all of God's creatures, but we do not have to be bothered by all of them. Amen. We are blessed to have another um, set of baptisms this Sunday. We have Corey and Oliver Bronnenberg here to be baptized. So we will be delighted to celebrate that sacrament later in our service and the sacrament of communion. Let's calm and center ourselves here in this place so that we might feel God's presence among us and know ourselves welcome in this time of worship. Join me as we call ourselves into worship. But now, thus says the Lord, the one who created you, the one who formed you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Come, let us worship the God who made us and the God who sustains us. Holy One, our strength and helper, you are with us, even when we do not feel it. You are the holy ground under our feet, supporting us. You are the breath in our lungs, sustaining us. You are the kind friend, walking us home after a long, hard day. Be our navigator, our nurse, our gentle shepherd, our loving parent. Be to us what we need. In the silence, we open ourselves to you. we join our voices in the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us confess our sins. We come hungry for God's mercy, longing for an experience of God. We are mindful of how harsh the world is and how harsh we have been with ourselves and with one another. We have become estranged from God's love bit by bit over the course of this week. We call ourselves to awareness of our own frailty and bring ourselves before the mercy of God. We confess first in silence and then together.
Holy God, we have given in to distraction, failing to notice your presence among us. Lord, have mercy. Generous God, we have been small-hearted and reluctant in sharing your love with others, especially those we find it difficult to love. Lord, have mercy. Justice-seeking God, we have resigned ourselves to the world as it is, rather than working towards a world of dignity and wholeness for all. Lord, have mercy. Forgive us the sins we are aware of and the sins we are unaware of. Gather us back from our wanderings and enfold us in your mercy. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God looks at each of us and speaks over us the words spoken at the baptism of Jesus. You are my own child, my beloved. I am well pleased with you. In full view of your failings, your frailty, your wandering ways, God offers you boundless, unconditional, perfect love. You are beloved of God. God is well pleased with you. The sacrament of baptism proclaims and celebrates the grace of God. By water and the spirit, we are called, claimed, and commissioned. We are called God's own, welcomed as children of God. We are claimed by Christ, united with Christ, united with one another and the Christian community of every time and place. We are commissioned to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice, and strengthened by the Holy Spirit for the work of the church in the world. When an adult chooses to be baptized, it is a sign of their response to the love of God and their commitment to following Christ. When we baptize an infant or a toddler, we remember that there is nothing we can do to earn God's love. It is a free gift poured on all of us that doesn't wash off, no matter how cranky we are. Amen? Um, I have one of my own. I'd like to invite the Bronnenbergs forward. We have Melissa and Corey, Violet and Oliver. And today we will be baptizing Oliver, the younger one, and Corey, the older one. They, um, Corey recently realized that he thought he had been baptized as a child, but he had not. And so they decided to have his baptism at the same time as they were baptizing their beloved Oliver. And so these two were engaged here at the lighthouse. Violet was baptized by Old North Church when almost six years ago now, and now we baptize these two. I'd like to invite the godparents forward as well. Corey's godparents it will be Melissa's parents, Dania and Chris Butler, and Oliver's godparents will be Julia and Eric. So come forward, my friends. It's perfect. Okay. You're perfect. Okay. So we have questions for you, Corey, and then for all of you on behalf of Oliver. Corey, do you desire to be baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I do. I do. Melissa and Corey, do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. Do you believe in God who has created and is creating? who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, and who works in us and others by the Spirit? If so, say, we do. We do. And Corey and Melissa, Denya and Chris, get these names right, Julia and Eric, will all of you share your faith with this child, growing with him in faith, hope, and love? If so, say, we will, with the help of God. Corey, do you renounce sin and the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? If so, say, I do. I do. And will you all teach Oliver to do the same? If so, say, we will, with the help of God. 
when you look at Oliver, will you try to see in him all the children of the world, children of all races and nations, and when holding him in your gaze, will you try to know God's love for all humanity? If so, say, we will, with the help of God. Corey, will you follow the way of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will, with the help of God. I will, with the help of God. And will all of you guide Oliver to learn from the wisdom of the prophets and the church, doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with our God? Will you offer Oliver the nurture of the church? If so, say, we will, with the help of God. And now I have questions for all of you who are gathered here who witness this baptism. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ, God's love made flesh? If so, say, we do. We do. And will you, who witness and celebrate this sacrament, nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this family now before you in your care, if so, please say, we promise our love, support, and care. We promise our love, support, and care. And now we'll bless this baptismal water. And older sister Violet, will you come help me? So you're going to pour all of this water into this bowl, okay? Yeah. Um, in, the big, in the big clear bowl, okay? Yeah, you got it. It's okay if some of it spells. Gracious and holy God, we bless you for the gift of life and within it, the gift of water. Over its unshaped promise, your spirit hovered at creation. By water comes the growth of the earth. Through water, you led the children of Israel to freedom. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. And in the waters of the Jordan, he was baptized and a dove descended and a voice was heard saying, this is my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. Now may your spirit be upon us and what we do, that this water may be a sign for all of new life in Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Okay, now I'll have you two come forward and I'll just have you, I'm gonna have them just stay right there. <laughs> and I'll baptize you first, Corey. Pray, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all, on your forehead I make the sign of the cross. May the blessing of God, source of love, Jesus Christ, love incarnate, and the Holy Spirit, love's power, be with you today and always. Amen. And by what name will this child be called? Oliver Patrick Bronnenberg. Oliver Patrick Bronnenberg. Oliver Patrick Bronnenberg, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, mother of us all. On your forehead, I make the sign of the cross. May the blessing of God, source of love, Jesus Christ, love incarnate, and the Holy Spirit, love's power be with you today and always. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Holy One, parent of all the faithful, for these, your children, washed in the waters of baptism. Embrace us all as children of the one household of your love. We thank you for your love revealed here this day as this community, these parents, and this child come together making covenant promises. We pray that this community will have the grace to uphold the promises made here this day, even when it's hard, providing a safe shelter of your love in which this child may grow and play. We pray that this family will bask in your love as they each make their own journey through this life. Amen. And now let us, the members of the body of Christ, express our welcome and affirm our ministry. We welcome you with joy into the common life of the church, one in the unity of Christ. We promise you our prayers and support as we share the hopes and labors of our faith by the power of the Holy Spirit May we continue to grow together in the knowledge and love of God made manifest in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we have some gifts for you from our community. Okay. I'm loud. I don't need a mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, gifts. The prayer shawl ministry knitters. 
and the uh, Board of Deacons uh, present to you these christening shawls in honor of the sacrament of baptism in the United Church of Christ. The stitches have been knit in a pattern of three to represent the Trinity and hold prayers and good wishes from many hands. May you be cradled in hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, and wrapped in love. Thank you, friends, for sharing this day and this joy with us. gospel lesson is from Matthew 16 verses 13 through 19. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they say, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The poetry reading this morning is The Magnificent Frigate Bird by Ada Limon. Is it okay to begin with the obvious? I am full of stones. Is it okay not to look out this window, but to look out another? A mentor once said, you can't start a poem with a man looking out a window. Too many men looking out a window. What about a woman? Today is a haunting. One last orange on the counter. It is a dead fruit. We swallow dead things. Once in Rio near Leblon, large seabirds soared over the vast South Atlantic Ocean. I had never seen them before eight feet wingspan and gigantic in their confident gliding, black, with a red neck like a wound or a hidden treasure or both. When I looked it up, I learned it was the magnificent frigate bird. It sounded like that enormity of a bird had named itself. What a pleasure to say, I am magnificent. They, and two, they traveled as a team. So I wondered if they named each other generously tapping one another's deeply forked tail or their plumage glistening with salt air, their gula sacks singing, saying, you are magnificent. You are also magnificent. It makes me want to give all my loves adjectives they deserve. You are resplendent. You are radiant. You are sublime. I am far away from subtropical waters. I have no skills for flight or wings to skim the waves effortlessly like the wind itself. But from here, I can still imagine rapture, a glorious caught fish in the mouth of a bird. Peter may be my favorite character in the Bible. If all you knew about him came from this passage today, he looks good. He answers the question right. And Jesus says, basically, you're in charge now. More often, though, Peter is answering questions wrong, being over eager, 
speaking well before he thinks and then eating his words. His heart is in the right place, but he is regularly confused and foolish, which is precisely why I identify with him. I like having someone in the Bible who keeps getting it wrong, but gets to come along anyways. Before Peter is Peter, his name is Simon. Our scripture today shows how he is renamed. The story begins with another renaming. Jesus walks with his disciples through Caesarea Philippi, a city that had been recently renamed after the Roman emperor. It would be like New York City being refashioned as Trump Town or Washington DC called Bidenville. Jesus' ministry of love and justice stands in stark contrast to the opulence and violence of the Roman Empire. Set against this backdrop, he asks his disciples if people really understand his ministry, if they get who he is. And the answer is that mostly people don't. Perhaps he's this prophet or that prophet, they're not really sure. And then Jesus turns to his own followers, the ones who have been walking with him for years, and he asks them a question in what I imagine is a tender and a vulnerable way. But who do you say that I am? As in, it matters to me what you say. As in, I care that I am known by you. Who do you say that I am? And Simon gets it right. Simon who gets so much wrong. Simon who, when Jesus is arrested, will deny him three times before the cock crows. Simon gets it right this time and says, you are the Messiah. You are the Messiah. You are the child of the living God, the one coming into the world. Jesus was then and is now a savior one who came to save us from aimlessness and violence, from self-indulgence and self-sufficiency. Jesus came to save us from each other, to save us from ourselves, by calling us to a new, radical, world-changing kind of love. But then and now, the world fundamentally misunderstands People over and over again misunderstood who Jesus was. They thought he would be someone to fight their wars for them or fix their problems or heal every illness. But he didn't and he doesn't. What he does do is offer us a new way of being in the world, a new form of relationship with God a God that draws ever nearer to us, a loving presence in a hurting world, a God with skin on, a God who loved the people he had made and the world he had made, even though those people had made and continue to make such a mess of things. In our scriptures for today, Simon names Jesus Messiah, and Jesus in turn names him Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, you are Peter. Cephas, Greek for rock, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. Sometimes we need other people to name us because we have such a hard time doing it for ourselves. We look in the mirror and see our faults. We lie down on our beds at night and stay awake watching a reel of everything we've done wrong. We let, look back on our lives and wonder if anything we've done has really mattered. The world does an equally bad job of naming us, classifying us by our jobs or our earning potential, by the colleges we went to or the things we accomplished. In the face of all of this, Jesus sees us and names us like he did with Simon Peter, Jesus sees the totality of who we are and names us as beloved, as worthy, as having a place and a role in this world and in this church. 
here at church, we name one another beloved. We do this not because of any particular acts we have done, not because you have proven yourself worthy or done enough. Here at church, we name one another beloved because that is what God says about us. And Jesus chose to build his church not upon the most faithful of disciples, not upon the ones who followed the rules the best, who held unwavering faith. Jesus chose to build his church up from Peter, who again and again throughout the Gospels is caught saying things he really shouldn't say, asking questions that are awkward and unfortunate, jumping into things head first and making a fool out of himself. Because I think Peter gets it. He gets that Jesus is here to show up, to walk among very human, very clumsy and beautiful people. Jesus is here to see beyond and beneath all our human frailty, to love us for the very human nature of us to wipe away the names the world gives us and the names we give ourselves and to say, you are sublime. You are resplendent. You are radiant. And here in church, we are here to do the same, to call out each other for what is true, what is true because God made it true. We are each made in the image of the living God we are each beloved. We are each broken and sometimes scared, but we are each filled with power, embraced in love. And we can be like those birds in the poem, knowing ourselves to be a bit ridiculous, but still glorious, traveling as a team, naming each other as Ada Limone writes, generously tapping one another's deeply forked tail or their plumage glistening with salt air, their guller sacks saying, you are magnificent. You are also magnificent. It makes me want to give all my loves, adjectives they deserve. You are resplendent. You are radiant. You are sublime. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, help us to hear your voice above the other voices of the world, the voices that reign inside our own minds, the voices that blare out at us through all the media we consume day in and day out. We hear over and over again how we are not enough, how we have not done enough, accomplished enough, looked thin enough or young enough, earned enough. Wipe away all those voices, drown them out, replace them with your voice of truth, which speaks over each of us, your love. Help us to hear your voice that says, I have made you and I will carry you. Help us to hear your voice which says, you are good, you are very good. Help us to hear your voice that offers forgiveness and mercy and grace in full view of who we are and all we've done wrong. We pray that this love and this mercy would reign in this world so that your world would be filled with justice. Holy One, we lift up to you all of those places that need your justice and your peace. We lift up to you the people of Ukraine. 
We lift up to you the people of Israel and Palestine. We lift up to you all of those places across the world and in our own neighborhoods where your peace and justice are sorely needed. Hear us in the silence as we pray. Holy One, we pray for your church. We pray that the church, this local church and all churches throughout the world would be a voice of your grace and mercy in this world full of violence and hatred. In the silence, hear our prayers for all faithful people and communities. We pray it for those we love who are suffering, those we love who are sick, those we love who are dying, those we love who are healing, who are tending, who are caregiving. In the silence, hear our prayers for those we love. We pray for those we baptized today, for Corey and for Oliver. We pray for all people, that all of us might know ourselves to be claimed by your love, God, and that all of us might be in the hands of loving communities who show forth your grace, your mercy, your care, and your love. In the silence, we pray for those baptized and for all we love. Holy One, gather up all of these prayers, the ones I have spoken, the ones we have named in our hearts. Gather up all these prayers. Help us to carry them with us this week, that we might show forth your love in this world, which needs it so badly. We pray this in all things, in the name and in the presence of Jesus. Amen. We come now to our time of communion. on the right page here. Here at Old North Church, we believe and we practice God's extravagant welcome. There is nothing that we can do to earn God's love or to earn our place in this community. The sacrament is a sign of God's love and a practice of community. So we invite anyone, no matter how young or old, how doubting or faithful, how baptized or not baptized yet, to partake in this meal. God is with us. God longs to gather us together, to bind up our wounds, to meet our hungers. We come to communion to meet God. Let us pray. God, you made this world in resplendent beauty. You called it good. You made us and called us very good. You invited us to live with you as partners in caring for this world and caring for one another. Again and again, we turned from your ways of justice and mercy, but you did not leave us to our own devices. You sent Jesus, your love embodied, to walk this earth and share our human pain and joy. His love challenged the ways of empire and crossed boundaries and angered those in power that Jesus would not be swayed. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. In his life, death, and resurrection, he showed that there is nothing at all that is stronger than your love. 
and nothing that can separate us from your love. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus gathered a table with his friends and followers and took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took another cup of wine. He gave it to his disciples and blessed it, saying, take this, all of you, and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We pray, come, Holy Spirit, come, bless this bread and cup that they may be for us, blessing and life itself. And bless us as we partake of them, that we may be for this world, nothing less than blessing and life itself. We come to this table to meet Jesus and to leave change. We pray all of this in his power and his presence. Amen. The deacons will come forward and they will bring around a plate with bread and gluten-free wafers, the round crackers or the gluten-free ones. You can take the wafer or the bread and dip it in the cup and take them both together. Know that at this table, you receive a taste of God's grace and you are welcome here. Friends, you can take as soon as you receive, so you do not have to be um, holding it in your hand with all of those flies.
Let us pray. O oh, good and gracious God, you have given us a taste of your love. Help us to be hungry for more love. May this meal bind us closer together with one another, bind us with you and your grace, and bind us with this world that you have loved so well. May what we have received strengthen and encourage us to do your work in the world today and always. We pray this in all things, in the presence of the risen Christ. Amen. Now, people of God, receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. And may the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God. From this day on and forevermore, let the people say amen. amen. And someone has a Richard.